A Senoeta está entre os mais prestigiados ateliês de arquitetura do mundo. Um estatuto que lhe conferiu a possibilidade de conquistar projetos tão especiais como o Museu do Memorial Nacional do 11 de Setembro, edificado no local onde existiam as Torres Gêmeas. O fundador do ateliê Snoeta, o norueguês Kjetil Thorsen, esteve em Portugal no encerramento da exposição que esteve patente no Museu da Eletricidade, com uma retrospectiva de mais de duas décadas de trabalho do gabinete. Wanting to change the world, the world is, a, is a driving force. You know, you want to do things better. Because architecture is for people, from the people to the people. It's not for the architects. Architects are just a tool. But unless this tool is motivated and inspired, it can make things worse or it can make things better. So if you want to change something into something which is better, you have this dream, then also you must engage yourself 100% in this task. Then you must understand or at least believe that what you're doing is better. But it shouldn't be dogmatic. This change is not a dogmatic change. It is a, it's a change which is relating to sensitivities uh, with the people. It's sort of slowly increasing and changing people's attitudes to things where you and I uh, and other people can discover things in themselves which they didn't know they had before. So architecture is a tool. Desde a criação do ateliê que os profissionais da Senoeta se comprometeram em criar projetos que garantissem a relação estreita entre a paisagem e a arquitetura. Um conceito de sustentabilidade que se imprimiu desde o início. We had already acknowledged the fact that in the profession of architecture, uh, landscape was a secondary profession. You do the buildings and then if you have any money left you do the landscape. But we thought it was time to shift focus on doing these things together in a more multidisciplinary manner, where both interior architecture, even art, sociology, maybe even literature, philosophy, uh, uh, in a landscape architecture, would sort of grind together and become a more holistic approach to architecture than what we had seen from a very professional point of view. So we were trying to break down some professional barriers and put people together into groups so we could develop architecture and landscape architecture and interior architecture together in a collaborative manner rather than just looking for the masterpieces. The biggest challenge in the future for contemporary architecture is going to be public space. Because we've been focusing for very long on the objects, at least the last 30 years, a lot of object focus, which is natural because it comes as a, as a classical development out of the modernist era. So the objects were important, but now we're seeing a slow change into focusing on the public space in relationship to these buildings. And I think that is a very, very important movement that is happening right now. We are, for instance, doing the Times Square in New York, which, you know, is a massive public space. Very difficult, it's like a river of people floating through this space. But if these spaces are not well resolved, then there is no reason why you should use public space. And public space is the last place where you can be actually free. It's like nature. Os arquitetos da Snoheta têm deixado a sua assinatura em edifícios emblemáticos, um pouco por todo o mundo. É o caso do Centro de Conhecimento Rei Abdulaziz, na Arábia Saudita, da Opera House, em Oslo, ou do Memorial do 11 de Setembro, que será inaugurado este ano, precisamente nessa data, em Nova York. If you look at our buildings, you will see that they relate either historically or uh, contextually or climate-wise, wind, sun, whatever have you, uh, material-wise, to the place where they are located. And I think also you will see that knowing the historical context of a place and drawing analysis based on historical events, for instance, can be an inspiration for contemporary architecture. It doesn't mean that you have to copy the things, but you're looking for some inherent elements that you can use in your contemporary interpretation. And at the beginning, they might be abstract, but once it's built, it's no longer abstract, it's a new reality. So actually what is happening is we're dealing with performative objects that actually have something more to say than their primary function. The Ground Zero project, the, the, the 
Memorial Pavilion project, which it's called now, was a very difficult project. It took a long time to do. It had a lot of program changes while we were developing it. It had a lot of different issues with the public, with the families, uh, political issues, uh, Republicans, Democrats. Uh, everybody has a different, slightly different view of what this should be. So then you have to be patient, you know? And it's a lot of negotiation, little design and a lot of negotiation. So we actually called it negotiated architecture instead of designed architecture. So the process is really to, to be aware, listen to all the people involved, try to be a very good tool for this particular situation and try to translate everything that comes to you back into this object that were, is under construction now and will open this uh, September. Um ateliê que está a deixar uma marca indelével nos quatro cantos do mundo, expressando bem o conceito de arquitetura de globalização. No próximo programa vamos entrevistar Eduardo Soto Moura. O prestigiado arquiteto foi recentemente galardoado com o Prémio Pritzker, a distinção máxima a nível mundial em arquitetura. Esperamos por si no próximo programa. Este programa tem o apoio de Casa IES, o portal imobiliário de referência. Resul Solar. Soluções para redes de energia convencionais e renováveis. Cadernos, espaços e casas do Semanário Expresso.